Good morning from Mae Sot, Thailand once again. It is Thursday, May 21st in the morning, and I'm just heading out into the city for a bit of a walk again. Not quite sure what I'm going to come across, but I have uh, an idea of dropping by a guest house, a different guest house that someone mentioned to me. When I went to the bicycle shop the other day, the uh, bike touring shop, uh, the owner there asked me where I was staying. And as always happens, <laughs> when you tell someone where you're staying, they always tell you about some place that's better, where you should be staying. You know, that, that's always how these things go. Just kind of funny. But anyway, I told him where I was staying and he said, well, why aren't you staying at Bantai? All the foreigners stay at Bantai. It's such an amazing place. It's such a great place. So I thought, well, I'm not going to move to Bantai. I've got my accommodation all sorted. But I thought, well, if this place is so amazing, why not uh, drop by and check it out? So I'm going to go check out this uh, guest house, see what it's all about. And then I'm probably going to continue walking in this direction and head up to Tesco Lotus Extra. Um, another kind of big shopping mall. I think it might be open again, like the household goods areas and the electronics stores, things like that. I'm assuming it has also opened, just as Robinson has been allowed to open. But, we'll see. Just thought I'd drop by there. I'm, I'm also curious how their system works, you know, in terms of tracking visitors to the shopping mall for contact tracing. You know, whether you sign in at a book or use uh, the Thai China website with uh, QR codes. Just curious to see uh, how things work out. And as I walk around, I will keep my eyes open for any tiny adventures along the way. I located the Bantai guest house on Google Maps. So I have a vague idea of where it is. And I remember this being a landmark the Casa Mia restaurant on the right there. I know I have to pass the Casa Mia and then a short distance after that, I turn down a little alleyway this way and Bantai is located at the end of uh, this alleyway. It's supposed to have a very nice garden setting and separate bungalows, which sounds very, very nice. And here's a place I've walked by a few times, but it was always closed before, but now it's open. Bikes, bagels, and bags. Braverly, bikes, bagels, and bags. So, yeah, maybe I'll drop by there on my way back. It has a sign, come on in and stay a while. So I guess you can go in and sit down. And I'm just coming up on an alleyway here, the laneway that I guess leads me to uh, Bantai. <laughs> Pretty uh, small laneway. And there are the signs. So I guess there's the Ban Pruk SA guest house. And there's a sign up there for Bantai. So this is where we go. Oh, look at that. Looks very nice. That must be a Bantai right up ahead there. Just has that garden kind of setting. And here is one of the places. Ban Pruk SA guest house. Oh, and here's the entrance to uh, Bantai, or the front office anyway. Oh, look at that. Sorry, temporarily closed. Customer who needs help, please call. Oh, there's the uh, front office. 
curious if they have uh, prices listed here. There's laundry. What have we got? A single with bath and fan, 350 baht per night. Actually, that's a really good price. One month, 6,000 baht. A single with air conditioning. Yeah, that's the, uh, <laughs> that's always the big jump in price. Fan, 350, add air conditioning. Now it's suddenly 850. One month, you get a 30% discount compared to the daily rate, I guess. Double room with air conditioning, 1,000 baht per night with a 30% discount for one month. Double room with bath and fan. And these are November 9th, 2019 uh, prices. Yeah, with this jump in price from 350 to 850, same room, but going from fan to air conditioning, that tells you just how expensive electricity must be here. So I'm kind of curious what will happen at my new guest house, the green guest house, because I do have air conditioning, but I only pay for it when I turn it on and I run and the electricity runs through a meter and I have to pay based on uh, that. It'll be interesting to find out how much that costs. Ah, very quiet, very beautiful back here. And this appears to be one of the bungalows. It's not a separate bungalow though. It looks like it has it's one building, but three rooms. One, two, three. Maybe we can uh, sneak a look through the window and see what the room looks like. Not sure the GoPro uh, can pick up very much, but it looks quite comfortable in there. I think the uh, main attraction for this place would be this quiet garden atmosphere even though you're right in the middle of uh, Mesot. And of course the, uh, the beautiful grounds must be a lot of work. All the upkeep on this, uh, on the lawns and the gardens. And there's another building set back. Looks like they have a variety of options here. Rooms up top and then rooms down on the main floor. Oh, that looks like a very uh, simple room there. If I ended up in a place like this, that's probably what I would end up with. <laughs> Your basic uh, single room at the bottom. Very nice place. And you get to hang out with all these uh, trees and plants. Hello. Hello. How are you? So there you have it. I didn't go inside any of the rooms. It's not even clear to me that they're open. They must be. Perhaps the sign at the office that says, you know, closed might refer only to the office itself. That you can still stay here if you want to right now, but they don't have anyone at the front office right now. I'm not sure. And I see a uh, selection of bicycles over there in the garage. So those are probably the bicycles available for rent here. So I imagine it's a full service kind of place where they would 
be able to bring food to your room and do laundry for you and all that kind of thing. Funny thing though, is if you showed me this place and then you showed me first hotel where I am now, for me, that'd be a perfect, an easy choice. I would stay at the first hotel. I just like that funky kind of atmosphere. But I think I would even choose the green guest house over this place, just because it suits me better. You know, if I were staying in a nice place like this, it's all very beautiful and manicured, but I would feel like an imposter if I were staying there. <laughs> like somehow I had fooled them that I'm not really the kind of person that should be in a place like that. I belong over at the uh, green guest house with all of its uh, funky uh, characteristics. Suits me better. One thing I've noticed about a lot of businesses around Asia is that the signs don't communicate the quality of a place. What I mean is, based on what I just saw, this sign for Bantai is completely inappropriate. I'll flip the GoPro around again. So to me, those graphics and then the sign itself does not convey how nice the place is. Um, even for this one here, it feels a little bit like it's underselling the place. You know, even if you zoom in on the, the lettering for guest house, you know, you can see just how cheaply that's been done. And it feels like a guest house of this level would have a much nicer sign than that to indicate what the place is like. And it looks like this might have been the, uh, the original sign for the Bantai guest house. And if you saw that sign, you would have no idea how nice the place uh, really is. It's just a trend I've noticed in Asia that often the signs don't match the hotels, you know, in terms of tone and atmosphere. I see that quite a bit. <laughs> I'm being attacked by a, another pack. I didn't catch them when they came running at me barking though. But as soon as I turned around and aimed the camera at them, they uh, calmed down. <laughs> it's mainly this, uh, this big guy here. He wasn't happy with me. I've noticed that dogs really pick up on people who look unusual or out of place. I was walking the other day down one of the main streets here and I suddenly heard a huge commotion and it was the dog, there's a big um, golden retriever, like a really big dog that is always staying at this hardware store. And he seems like a very friendly, laid back kind of dog. He, does, he barely even moves. But this golden retriever was chasing down and barking and really kind of upset with this man and followed him for a couple of blocks down the street. And I'd never seen this golden retriever act that way before. But it kind of made sense when you looked at the man because he clearly was an outsider of some kind. I don't know where he was from, but he had very, very dark skin. His clothing was different from everyone else here in Mesot. And he had some kind of old flip-flops. He was walking around um, gathering up recycling bottles and cardboard and things like that from all these garbage cans around the city. So he had this giant bag on the back of his, on his back that he was holding. So everything about him looked like a stranger, like someone who is out of place here. And the dog picked up on that and really focused on him and barked at him and, and drove him down the street. And I think uh, I've noticed a difference too. If I'm walking around just normally, the dogs may not react to me. But if I'm holding a camera on a, on a tripod or a uh, grip, like I have my GoPro right now, then the dogs kind of come at me because I look weird to them. There's something odd about my posture and holding this object. It triggers something in their brain that, nah, this guy's a stranger, he doesn't belong here. And then they kind of move me along. But if I were walking around without the camera, they would be less inclined to uh, bark at me. So yeah, dogs are uh, pretty smart that way. All around uh, Mesot, 
you see these little um, garbage and recycling centers. A yellow one, a green one, an orange one, and a blue one. And I assume each one has a specific purpose for garbage or recycling, but nobody pays any attention to that. All the garbage just gets dumped into them, no matter what, what the color is of the bin. I don't think I have much to say in the way of a Thailand update. I scanned some of the news this morning and um, we still have not had a single COVID-19 related fatality since May 9th. So that's what, uh, 10, 11, 12 days ago now with uh, no fatalities at all, which is uh, quite good. And the government is currently discussing extending the emergency, the state of emergency, even beyond uh, its current end date. But that doesn't mean, you know, the restrictions are being increased. That just means the state of emergency just gives the prime minister and other officials certain powers that they wouldn't normally have. And that just makes it more efficient and faster for them to make decisions about restrictions, whether imposing them or lifting them. Without the uh, state of emergency, then they would have to go through the full government system. And I guess that just takes a lot longer and has a lot more steps and bureaucratic uh, you know, problems associated with that. So the state of emergency doesn't mean more strict measures. It just means a different and faster way of uh, implementing them or even removing them. One story I've been following for a while is a story of uh, three Nigerians who have been stranded at the airport in Bangkok for about two months, maybe even longer than two months. Uh, two of them were traveling together and one was separate, but all three of them were in transit, you know, going through Bangkok on their way to Myanmar and I think on their way to Dubai. But when they got to the uh, airport in Bangkok and they had to change planes, while they were there, Myanmar closed its borders and then Dubai closed its borders and they were suddenly stuck in the airport. They didn't have a visa for Thailand and they had no way of getting one at the airport. So they had no choice but to um, just live in the airport. And there have been a lot of like these feel good stories in the Thai press because a lot of uh, staff at the airport and other Thai passengers have been taking care of these uh, Nigerians, giving them food care packages and, and helping them out in other ways. So I guess they've been quite comfortable in the airport. Though I imagine you, no matter how comfortable they uh, have been, they uh, would rather not be stuck there. And I think there was a story this morning that something is finally happening that will allow them to leave the airport, either to continue on to their destination or get a visa, some kind of special dispensation to leave the airport and enter Thailand. But yeah, stranded Nigerians, I'll bet you they're not the only ones in the world. It's probably uh, stranded Nigerians uh, everywhere. We're getting close to Tesco Lotus. You can just see the sign for it up ahead there. Oddly enough, on Google Maps, the whole shopping complex is listed as closed. Just says, you know, temporarily closed completely, which is not true at all. I mean, it's always been open, but, you know, partially open recently. And now it may or may not be fully open. I'm not sure. Up ahead, you can see the mountains of uh, Myanmar. If you entered in Myanmar, crossing the border here, and then you wanted to go to Malamain or someplace like that, you have to go over those mountains and then down the other side, and then you're inside uh, Myanmar. And this is a very uh, familiar sight to, for anyone traveling around uh, Southeast Asia, of course.
the uh, durian stand. Yeah, these are incredible fruit, of course. They're almost like weapons. The, uh, the outside is so hard and these knobs are so sharp. Couldn't imagine running into one of those or um, having one fall on you. That would not be pleasant. And when you open them up, of course, this is the, uh, the fruit that you find on the inside. This is what it looks like. So this was 400 baht, 550 baht, 480. And as everyone knows, durian has a very unique texture, flavor, and even a more unique smell. Some people love it. A lot of people hate it. It is a fruit that is banned in most public transportation around Asia. You can buy durian, you know, buy it all you want, but then you're not allowed to take it into the subway and take it home. A lot of hotels will have signs in the lobby you know, with a picture of a durian with a big red X over it. You're not allowed to take durians into your hotel room just because the smell is so pungent and it can hang around for quite a long time. So, I don't mind it. I've had a durian a few times in my life. It's not something I go far out of my way to get. It's not a huge delicacy for me or anything like that. But if, uh, if I'm feeling adventurous and I'm with other people, um, and local people always want to see you try the durian and engage the expression on your face to see whether you like it or are disgusted by it, you know? Because <laughs> a foreigner's reaction to durian ranges from delight to disgust. Total and utter disgust, you know? Just depends on uh, the person. <laughs> I'm usually somewhere in the middle. I did see one other story in the news this morning, which I found kind of interesting. You actually see a lot of these articles now and they usually have a, a headline or the theme of the new normal. Like what will life be like after uh, coronavirus, COVID-19? What is the new normal? And this article was all about new elevators in Bangkok where They've replaced all of the buttons, you know, how you would normally go in and press a button to close the door or go to, you know, floor number three or number four. They've gotten rid of the buttons because, you know, one person presses button for number four. The next person comes in and presses the same button. And then there's the risk of transmission of the virus. So they got rid of the buttons and they replaced them with foot pedals, kind of like on an organ. They have these big rows of foot pedals along the along the corner, along the floor of the elevator, and then you just take your foot and press down on the pedal for whatever floor you want to go to or open, close the door, things like that. <laughs> I can't imagine you're gonna see this, you know, change in all the elevators in the world. That would cost a fortune and it would be kind of ridiculous. Plus, uh, this only works if there's like five or six floors in the building. You know, if you've got a modern skyscraper with uh, 50 or 60 floors, it's not like you can have 60 pedals um, in every elevator. But yeah, the new normal. Everything is uh, changing. So, it is open anyway. And we've got our social distancing lines on the ground. Temperature? Okay. Hmm. So here we have all these uh, tables for uh, customers to sign in. And we've got a uh, chair. And again, I'm not sure what the system is here. I'm guessing you can do one or the other. 
That's probably what this sign says, but I can't read it. So maybe you can do the QR code or you can sign in. You could do both, but I think you only have to do one. I'm going to try the uh, QR code just for fun. See what happens. All right, here I am. Got my phone. Need my glasses now to read my phone. Turn on my camera. So as you can see now, my uh, camera is on and I don't have a lot of experience with QR codes. I know they've been around for a long time, but they're kind of new to me. I only really started using them a few months ago. Um, I never quite understood how they worked, but I know you just have to aim your camera at the code. And then if your phone is set up to do it, it will automatically take you to a website. So let's see what happens. Oh, it read it. And then I got this little symbol down at the bottom. And if I touch that, it should take me to the website. <laughs> it didn't work. It sounded like it just took a picture. Let's try that again. Okay, that time it worked. Now I have a view website option. And what will happen now? So I have a choice between shop check-in or check out and shop evaluation. So since I'm, check I'm coming into the store, I will check in and it came up in English automatically. Oh, and it just says checked in. There it is. May 21st and then it gives me the time for when I uh, checked in. And then I guess when I go to leave, I scan the code again and then um, I will be uh, checked out. And because I use the QR code, I think the website knows everything about me automatically. So I don't think I have to fill out the form at all. All right, we're checked in. Let's go shopping. And this setup here looks better than the one I saw at Robinson because all the tables are spread out, you know, with one or two meters between them. And I think at uh, Robinson, there were like long tables and you might end up actually like right beside other people, but here they've uh, spread them out. Yeah, things look very different here. Everything is open on the main floor, all the uh, food stalls. When I was here last time, all of this was uh, closed and roped off. The bubble milk tea shop here, it was open, so I did get a bubble milk tea, but I think that was the only, one of the few places that was open. I've talked about this before, but for anyone who has not been to this part of the world, like if you live in Canada, for example, you would probably be astonished at the high quality of food you can get in a food court like this. You know, in my experience in uh, Canada, a food court at a shopping mall had, even for me, in, and I, I know very little about food, but even for me, the food in a Canadian uh, shopping mall is pretty bad. I mean, you might as well just go to a coffee shop and get a muffin, you know, that's uh, as good as it's going to get. The actual food you might get, you know, reheated pizza, something like that. It's about as good as it's going to get. But in a shopping mall in uh, Southeast Asia, you can get amazing food, like as good as you'd get in any restaurant, in my opinion, anyway. But of course, one thing that is still closed is the uh, movie theater. I think all movie theaters are uh, still closed now. They're not allowed to uh, open yet. There's no date for when that's going to happen yet. A 
And I guess massage chairs are not allowed to operate yet. Okay, that was the main floor. Time to head up to the star of the show, the actual uh, Tesco, which is up on the uh, second floor. Or here in Thailand, maybe they call it the first floor. That might be the ground and this is the first. Whatever it's called, I have to ride the escalator to get up there. And I'm mainly interested to see if the household goods um, sections of Tesco are open now. I think it will be. We'll find out. And they have a couple of uh, cell phone shops here and a banana cell phone shop. Oh, keyboards. Hello. Uh, that's interesting. This is the keyboard that I have in um, Malaysia. I have it in storage, the K380. And it's quite a nice one too because it's very small and light. And you can pair it with three different devices at the same time. And then all you have to do is hit the button to switch from phone one to phone two to your laptop. You know, it works. Uh, and it's a, yeah, it's a Bluetooth device. You don't have to plug in a dongle or anything like that. So, yeah, it's kind of silly for me to, to buy a new one here when I already had one in storage. But of course, the fact that it's in storage means I uh, can't get at it. And this is the one that I bought down here, the MK220. And someone was uh, talking about this one, the MK235, as a perhaps a better option than the 220. But I did a bit of research and they're very similar, except that this one is more full sized. You can see it has more room around the arrow keys and everything is a bit more roomy. So it's a much bigger keyboard. This one is not as comfortable to use, but it's also much, much smaller in terms of length and width and weight. So depends what you need. Yeah, it looks like this would have been a good place to come when I needed my um, wireless keyboard. They have a lot more choice here. I even have the uh, Microsoft all-in-one media uh, portable keyboard. But I probably wouldn't have gotten it anyway because it's uh, you know more than twice as expensive as the Logitech and I don't really need anything uh, that fancy. But there it is there. Looks very uh, sleek and smooth. A funny thing is that I keep wanting to reach out and touch things. Like I want to pick up the box and turn it around and look at it. But then I catch myself, or I try to catch myself each time. Because you're not really supposed to be in a shop, you know, touching everything as you wander around. In this era of social distancing. Yeah, portable hard drives. Two terabytes for seventeen seventy. There's an interesting device. I'm always interested in adapters because I always seem to want to plug in a whole bunch of things that don't plug together. That's a USB-C nine-in-one multifunctional adapter. Be very cool if I still had a laptop. But what I need is something like that for my smartphone now so that I can plug multiple devices into my smartphone. But I don't think it can do that. It's not an OTG cable. It's like a USB-C for a uh, computer. I just spent a few minutes going over all the laptops they have here. And to be honest, I think any one of these laptops would do me just fine, even the most basic ones. But I think for now I'm going to keep researching and stick with using my uh, smartphone for now. Of course, if I bought a laptop here, I'm realizing now I'd end up with a keyboard with the Thai lettering on it as well as English. And that's no big deal, obviously. But I would prefer a keyboard that was uh, only English and not looking uh, quite so cluttered. And here we are inside Lotus and everything is open. This whole area was uh, roped off last time I was here. 
bicycles. What can you get in the way of a bicycle at Lotus? The price is the most important thing, of course. 4,290 baht for a bike like that. And that price, 4,200 baht, is about $130 US. And then it looks like you can get one of these um, basic folding bikes for about 3,000 up to 5,000. And there they are there. Aha, stationary. So could my hunt for scotch tape finally be over? my quest. A lot of pens, whiteouts, rulers. Glue, getting closer, and here is the tape section. And there we have it. Scotch magic tape in a little uh, dispenser. I wonder why it's magic tape. Is it just because it's um, invisible? Because normally in every store I've been to so far, you could get rolls of tape like this, but without the actual uh, dispenser. Oh, and they have another one down here. Scotch transparent tape. So what is the difference between magic tape and transparent tape? Price is the same. I decided to go with the magic tape. It's kind of funny though, I'm so used to the Scotch branding, colors, and design from Canada that when I looked at this, the first thing I thought is that it's not genuine Scotch. You know, it looks fake to me because the packaging is quite different from what we would have in, than what I'm normally used to. It looks kind of like a cheap knockoff, but I think it's real Scotch tape. But that's what I have. Mm. I also picked up some thick foam tape, and I think I can use this for the inside of my new hard drive enclosure because my hard drive is too thin for that enclosure and it rattles around inside there. And if I put in layers of this uh, thick foam, I think it'll hold it in place and it won't uh, rattle around as much. That's a theory anyway. So shopping is done and I'm leaving the store. I wasn't sure whether I could exit by the same doorway. They don't seem to have a separate exiting line like uh, Robinson had. But um, anyway, I just came back to the same spot. I've got this little table here and I scanned the QR code again. And there I now have the choice between checking in or checking out. It came up in English automatically, so I'm going to check out. And now I guess I do a little survey. Floor cleaner, frequently exposed surface. I'm not sure what that means, but I'll say they had that. Operators, employees, and service personnel wearing sanitary masks or cloth masks have. There is a service point to wash your hands with soap or alcohol or antiseptic. Have. Spacing between the tables, between seats, at least one meter. Have. And then I can send the evaluation form. And I'm all done. So, so I guess now I can leave at Robinson they had people checking to make sure you either exited with the QR code or you signed a booklet on your way out. But here they don't seem to have that system. 
I've seen a whole bunch of people just uh, exiting without doing anything. So it's a bit odd. But they do check. Uh, well, even going through the desk when I entered the store, I just, you know, the guy took my temperature and that's it. And then there was nobody ensuring that I filled out the form or did the QR code. So perhaps it's voluntary. Yeah, I think I read that it is a voluntary system. So you don't absolutely have to do it, maybe. Anyway, I'm all checked out. And my... Uh, and my shopping is all done. I didn't really pick up very much. I just got the few household items I wanted, like tape and foam to uh, cushion my hard drive. And, uh, you know, I think I got some, uh, some uh, razor blades and some toothpaste and stuff like that. That's all I picked up. So now I'm heading back into the city. pretty rare to see uh, all of me but there's a uh, kind of a reflective uh, window right there so that's me with my uh, GoPro so I'm normally uh, holding it like this I did try to get a meal inside there that looked pretty good inside the food court but even though it all looks open it turns out that a number of the restaurants were not quite open yet there were staff there but they were busy cleaning and preparing and they said that they were going to open tomorrow. So they weren't actually uh, open today yet. So I guess that is it for the morning adventures. I walked back from Tesco into town and I was going to stop off at one of the many coffee shops that I passed, but I'm just way too hot and sweaty. I don't think I would enjoy it very much. So I think I'll reserve that for, uh, you know, going back in the morning someday, you know, when I wake up and I'm nice and cool and fresh. And then I can start checking out some of the uh, local coffee shops here. So, yeah, nothing too terribly exciting. Trip to see uh, a local hotel, the Ban Thai, and then a bit of shopping at Tesco. And I think that is the end of this video for today. And I'll see you in the next one as I'm heading back to my hotel. Uh, never a dull moment at the first hotel. Looks like they are cutting down one of the trees. <laughs> I've seen dozens of videos like this on YouTube where they try to pull the tree in one direction with a rope. But trees are tricky business as I know from personal experience from being around a fair amount of logging in uh, British Columbia. Trees do not want to fall in the direction you want them to fall. So you've got to be very careful. Looks like he's got quite a ways to go though. So uh, <laughs> maybe I will leave them to it. If I hear a big crash up in my room and glass shattering. I'll know that it fell onto uh, one of the vehicles.